You slept with him. You slut. But no. Listen, a lot of you have told me that you've went on to watch the movies I review. And let me tell you, please add this one to your list. When I say I've watched this movie about four times this week alone, this movie has aged like a fine wine. I knew this movie was a comedy, but child, the jokes still hit. And Wayman is still that girl. With that being said, while watching this movie, I noticed some things. But before we get to that, it's time to recap. So let's get into it. As the opening credits play, we see our main character, Shane, go through a shoebox filled with different items. We see old photos and newspaper clippings of a raid gone bad where millions go missing, 20 million to be exact, and five cops end up dead. We fast forward to a hotel and this is where we meet another main character, Peaches, who is doing a very bad job being a housekeeper. Housekeeping! Can you spell do not disturb? Can you spell Lysol? God damn, you better check your post, you might be dead. She didn't even give a warning knock, just barged right on in. A miss. In another room, we see these two guys trying to settle a deal with these diamonds. Shortly after, Miss Peaches barges in with quite a surprise. I ain't even gonna hold you. I didn't realize that Keenan was this handsome. I was a kid when this came out, so I didn't see him like that. But now, <laughs> job. Don't you dare judge me. But anyway, Shane tells Peaches to beat it so she can bring the car around, but Miss Peaches wants in on the fun. You want me all right? I'm cool. Because you know I've been doing my karate and going to the gun range and all that. I can help you out, you know? Get your karate kick and gun range ass in the car now. While Shane is handling business, Peaches calls from the lobby to let him know that company is on the way, which forces Shane to get a little creative. Shane finally makes it down to the lobby, but unfortunately for him, he was surrounded. So he had to do what he had to do and bust through this window. All right, that is it. We are going right now. Let's go. 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 Ah! Hi, Peaches. Child, a miss. We fast forward to Peaches at work. Why does she have so many nameplates? But Peaches was relaying the events from one of her favorite stories to one of her friends, and her friend on the other line was devastated. You're not gonna believe this. She died. If that wasn't enough, this storyline took a dramatic turn. I'm pregnant, and it's yours. Oh no! I hope your prostate falls out. This takes me back to when I was little, and my grandmother and aunties used to be in their feelings about the young and the restless and days of our lives. <laughs> this scene was so funny to me. Shortly after, Shane shows up to the office. Peaches takes one look at him and instantly gives him shit about his appearance, urging him to shave every once in a while and dress up more. As he's looking at his mail, he sees the check from his most recent job, but unfortunately for him, it was null and void due to the damage he caused to the limo. Now, he can't pay peaches, but he promises to when he gets it. He gets a visit from an old colleague, Sonny, who comes by to check in and ask for a favor. Sonny would like Shane to work on a personal case for him. This case involves an old love, Angela, who was involved with a wanted man, Mendoza, who was a part of the raid gone bad that was referenced at the beginning of the movie. Shame is reluctant to help him since doing so will bring up unresolved feelings for him, but Sonny insists that this could be his chance to get back in Mendoza and get some closure. Turns out Angela is in LA and Sonny wants Shane to find her and bring her in. So, Shane has Peaches go on a little shopping spree to visit Angela's fave shop where she often purchases a rare perfume, ask a couple of questions, and see what she can find. Meanwhile, he goes to the police station to grab a file on one of Mendoza's right-hand men. After he's done, he goes to Rodeo Drive to pick up Peaches and see what she was able to find. Child, Miss Peaches went on a little shopping spree, got her a whole new set, 
plus a silk tie and drawers for Shane. She was also able to find out that Angela had been trying to lock down another bottle of this rare perfume and left her contact info with the boutique so that they could call her when a new shipment came in. She passed this over to Shane. Oh, but then Miss Peaches had to spot a familiar face. And let's just say things went left. Chad! Chad from out the hot turn! That's right, sweetheart, the one and only. And it didn't take long for Shane to find Louise and grab a quick bite on the go. Mm. Delicioso. Louise didn't take Shane seriously at first, but it didn't take long before he had no choice but to. And let's just say, word is gonna get back to Mendoza faster than usual. Later that night, Shane gets back to his office and gets attacked by Mendoza's men. And surprise, Mendoza is officially out of hiding. This forces Shane to hide out at Peach's place. She cleans him up and it's here where it gets all soft and sensual. <laughs> More so from Peach's side. It's clear that Peaches has feelings for him while Shane doesn't take her too seriously. Shane has known her since she was 16. She was now 22 and wanting to be seen as grown enough and good enough for him. When she asks Shane why he never takes her seriously, Shane insists that they have nothing in common using this question as evidence. Who's the greatest heavyweight of all times? Tyson. You telling me Mike Tyson could beat Muhammad Ali? That's right. Mike Tyson can't spell Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali can't even spell Muhammad Ali. Peaches tells Shane that her roommate won't be home till late so he can camp out in their room, but Peaches didn't tell him everything he needed to know about this roommate. You don't mind me being here, but Peaches said it would be okay if I crashed in your room tonight. My, no, honey. Ain't nothing like coming to a warm man in the bed. Brother, you better show me some tits or die. Miss Peaches, you need to come up in here and get this rock wilder. And this is where we meet the iconic Wayman. You are going to love this character. We fast forward to breakfast and it's still very awkward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Shine. Peaches is busy reading her tabloids while Wayman fixes breakfast. Now, Wayman offers Shane some breakfast, but his rude ass didn't want anything. Wayman cooked, and then he had the nerve to talk mess. Wayman sure can burn. Yeah, well, he should try keeping his head away from the stove while he's burning. Oh, no, he didn't. Miss Peaches? Child. And then Shane took it even further. Looked like Woodstock went a little peroxide crazy. Oh, no, don't go get your boxes into a bunch just because you was cruising in your sleep last night. And... Started speed. Okay, that's it. Hold it. Peach's outfit is so cute here, but as Peaches and Shane head out, Wayman had one request for Peaches. Oh, Peaches, on your way to the post office, could you please stop by the store and give me a box of relaxer and make sure that it stays my last time you got me super girl. Anyway, Shane and Peaches head to the post office to find some more info on Angela. They find her current address and Shane asks Peaches to call Angela and tell her the perfume will be available today for pickup so they can lure her out of hiding. Let me say that Shane is pretty creative. To get rid of this boutique owner so he could catch Angela when she came to get the perfume, he calls the boutique, posing as a radio host, had this lady thinking she won 10K, had her saying F this job super quick. Shortly after she leaves, Angela arrives and child, should I say it? Y'all should already know the phrase that's coming to mind, but listen, it was most definitely in the contract. Sally Richardson has never been caught slipping. Never. Anyway, Shane ends up following her to a women's only spa where he's prevented from going in. But he does run into a familiar face and baby, this is the funniest scene out the whole movie to me. Wayman refused to help Shane since he was about to go to lunch with his friend Bernard and Shane had to find a way to force his hand. Excuse me. Who's this? This is Bernard, what's wrong with you? And it gets even more ridiculous. Homewrecker, he's with me. You are my stuff and you know it, don't even try it. <gasps> you slept with him, you slut. <laughs> Bernard. And then this happens. And you. Mr. Coffee, if you'd like some steamed milk with your double espresso, I'm your man.
This scene still has me crying laughing after all these years, but Wayman helps Shane track down Angela, and let's just say it wasn't a happy reunion. What? Shane, what are you doing here? You look good. You look like shit. Yeah, well, today was laundry day. Shame calls Sonny to let him know that he's found her, but it turns out Sonny is working for Mendoza, and word gets to him through Luis that Angela has been found. While Angela asks Shame how he found her, they start to catch up, and when she tells him that she's been a witness protection this whole time, he realizes that Sonny has set this up to find and get Angela. Not long after, Luis and the rest of Mendoza's men show up to get Angela, forcing Shame and Angela to get creative yet again. They score this Jeep off this guy and make a run for it. Luis thought he was really doing something, but it wasn't long after that, Shame sends him off a cliff and he lands at a burger joint. Later on that night, Peaches gets a surprise when Shane brings Angela to her house to hide out, leaving Peaches to babysit Angela. And let me remind you that Angela is Shane's ex, so you already know this is going to be awkward as hell. Meanwhile, Sonny's angry ass comes to Mendoza's to get some answers about why he let Angela get away. Mendoza tells Sonny that Shane started all of this and he will finish it how he sees fit. And for some reason, Sonny thought he could talk to Mendoza crazy, but Mendoza quickly got him together and told him what needed to be done. Tell me why Shane got all razzle-dazzled up, pulling out his finest three-piece suit. He's been bummy with peaches this whole time, but Angela decided to pop out and now he wants to get spiffy, even pulling out his special whip. Child, over here looking like Hitman. Back at Peach's place, Angela is clearly annoyed and Peaches is trying her best not to let her get to her, but Angela just had to get catty. It's funny. Shame never mentioned you to me before. Bothers you that he's so in love with me, doesn't it? But Peaches was not going to play around the bush. She let Angela know that she saw right through her. But I can see right through all that Maybelline. And I know you ain't nothing but a gold digging skank. You heard Shame again? And you better watch your back. And Angela starts running her mouth comparing Peaches to a Chihuahua, which of course pisses Peaches off. And so she insists that if Angela wants to leave, she can do just that, playing right into what Angela wanted from the jump. And it wasn't long after she left that Peaches knew she had messed up, but she didn't even have enough time to fix it because she had a surprise guest, Shame's former boss. Meanwhile, Shame has found Luis and has taken him to this random building to question him. When Luis refuses to give Shame details on Mendoza, Shame leaves him, making him think that he's let him go. But unfortunately for him, the fun was about to begin. Hey, no! hey, no! Can somebody tell me where the exit is? You're dead meat! Now Luis is out here running for his life and Shame is still messing with him. The good news is you're only five miles from East LA. <laughs> the bad news is it's that way. <laughs> All he had to do was hop in the car. His crazy ass was still running for some reason. But when he finally gives in and tells Shame where Mendoza could be found, it doesn't work in his favor. Hey, listen up. Luis says the white man can kiss his ass. Make sure you tell him your friends without shop. Shame heads to a club where Mendoza was. Ironically, Wayman and Bernard were there also. He sits down with Mendoza and lets him know that Luis is out of commission and won't be returning. The subject quickly changes to Angela. They are both still beefing over this woman. Listen, Angela must have really put it on them because they were both pulling this type of stuff underneath the table. Mendoza pulls a gun on this chick to get a rise out of Shane, but Shane could have cared less about saving her. I will kill this beautiful flower. I don't give a fuck. She didn't want to give me a phone number anyway. Five, 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 six, nine, six, nine. And since Shane clearly didn't care about old girl, Mendoza aimed for someone he knew would have caused Shane to stand down. Don't die, Wayman. Don't die, Wayman. Uh, calm down. And the nominees for Best Actress in a Groovy Nightclub Drama, Miss Wayman Harrington. 
child. <laughs> Shane finally makes it home to find that his boss is there and Angela is now missing in action. When he questions Peaches about why she let Angela leave, Peaches turned the tables on him. Is this who you got all dressed up for? And I look at your raggedy ass every day and Pocahontas comes up in here for five minutes and you want to get all snazzy. Shame heads back out to go and find Angela, causing his boss to threaten to shoot him. And this threat, like many others, falls on deaf ears. How are you just going to let him leave like that? You know daggone well you're supposed to go over there and arrest him, put him in handcuffs. You're just going to let him trial up around. Hey! Now you, I will shoot. We go to Angela pulling up to a storage unit where Shame's there waiting for her. It's here where he finds the millions that went missing in the failed raid stashed in a briefcase. Meanwhile, Peaches is chilling out in protective custody and out of nowhere, Sunny comes and blows up the spot, forcing Peaches to think quick on her feet. Don't hurt me, all right? I don't know all nothing right, about right, this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm not gonna hurt you. Thank you. Ah! While Peaches gave Sonny a run for his money, in the end, she still wasn't able to get away and Mendoza captured her. Shame is questioning Angela on the details of the failed raid. Turns out Angela stole the money from Mendoza as a means to escape and start a whole new life. Somehow while talking to her, Shame falls for Angela's charm and they were this close to doing the thing before Shame got a call from Mendoza letting him know he had Peaches. And as always, Peaches was quick on her feet. Peaches? Yeah. You okay? No, I'm all right. I'm on the beach! Say what you want about Peaches, but she was clever as hell. But Mendoza tells Shane to meet him at some random mall. Angela tries to convince Shane to not go and rescue Peaches, but he doesn't fall for it. And Angela realizes that he really does care for Peaches and the grip she once had on him is fading. Okay, Shane. Just promise me you're gonna smoke his ass. Like a motherfucking pack of cools. So the fellas get to the mall and Shane finally confronts Sonny. Turns out Sonny wanted some of those millions for himself, but the other cops on the case didn't want any parts. So he killed the five cops and left Shane alive to take the fall. Mendoza initiates the exchange and it seems like it's going well. Little did they know that Shane was about to take a big chance on Peaches and allow her to back up their big talk. Peaches, I hope you're as good as you say you are. And baby Peaches showed up and showed out. And while all this mess is happening around them, their lives being in danger and all, Peaches had to let something off her chest. Shame! Yeah? I love you. I love you too, Peaches. Listen, Peaches is gone off of Shane. I can't even blame her. Nope. But as these two guys burst through the ceiling, Shane is forced to get creative once again. Thank you. And Luis still hasn't learned his lesson. He can barely move at this point, yet he's still participating in this mess. He releases these dogs out on shame, which was clever because dogs were the only thing he feared. And while he gains control, he's able to empty this trash onto Luis, making him dinner for the dogs. Luis just needs to give it up at this point. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peaches up here hiding in a crib while Angela is hiding in this random room where she's found by Sunny. And of course, she was able to use her charm to make Sunny think he had a chance and she shoots him dead before he could get the money. How do you feel about yourself now, stupid motherfucker? You could have had some pussy. <laughs> As Peaches tries to exit the building, she's found by Mendoza and Shane swiftly comes to her rescue, causing her to talk plenty of mess. Yeah, get up, Mendoza. What's up now? You was talking all that yay yank. You was looking for my boyfriend. He is now. What's up? Huh. Right, Shane? I guess I should just go wait in the car, huh? So finally... There's a showdown between Mendoza and Shane. Mendoza puts up a good fight, but fortunately for Shane, he's able to overpower him and handcuff him. But neither one of them were prepared for Angela to shoot Mendoza and threaten Shane to give her the money. 
Now, Peaches had to show Angela her best moves. And baby, Peaches laid that Mortal Kombat fatality finish him beat down on Angela. See this move right here? That's what I'm talking about. And then we have this cute moment. How come the only time I get to touch you like this is when y'all bruised and bloody? Are you coming on to me? And then Shame's boss comes to complain about the mess Shame has caused, but leave it to Shame to flip the script. You are going to take the credit for all of this. I'll take all the credit. For the fatal capture of Ernesto Mendoza, the discovery of a DEA mole, not to mention the safe return of a federal witness and $15 million in drug money. Anyway, turns out that $20 million got whittled down to $15 million since Shane took out his finder's fee. I sincerely hope he just got her back pay and then some. But this is pretty much the end. We see a final kiss from these two and that's it for this movie. And here are my final thoughts. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend that you do. I even recommend that you purchase it if you can because this falls into the comfort movie category. Keenan is a genius. His earlier movies were always hilarious without being overly corny. The perfect blend. But let's talk about this movie. Shane was a former cop who was blamed for a raid gone bad. This raid involved an ex-lover who worked with a crime boss to steal $20 million, which led to the deaths of five cops. When the movie starts off, he's down on his luck, taking odd jobs that are not paying well, living reckless, and really not taking care of himself. He has his sidekick, Peaches, who works for him, looks out for him, and has a thing for him. He doesn't take her seriously till nearly the end of the film. What bothered me the most about their union was the fact that Shane was out here driving a hoopty, looking bummy, not shaving, not caring about his outer appearance at all. He was paying my girl late, having her running all type of errands, but the minute Miss Angela steps back on the scene, child, he pulled out the good whip, the good suit, shaved, got a fresh manicure, and she still was trying to play him. Shame and Peaches had some similarities though. They were both quick on their feet and clever when it came to getting out of sticky situations. They were great partners in crime and Peaches had his back and Shame had hers. As far as the love connection, I feel it was quite uneven since clearly Peaches had more feelings for him than he did for her. She was crazy about that man and though he gave in in the end, he literally almost slept with his ex-girl hours before. As far as Wayman, Listen, he was the absolute highlight of this film. I loved every scene that Corin was in and wish we could have saw more of his work. Sadly, Corwin passed away three months before Low Down Dirty Shame premiered from complications of HIV. He was set to play a role in Don't Be a Menace as well, but died in the early stages of the film. I can only imagine where he could have been now. He was an amazing comic and actor. Rest in love. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Thanks for watching this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. There won't be a review next week. I know. I know. But y'all know I'm never gone for long. So, I'll see you next time, cousins. Bye.